things get even more creepy, and I mean that as a figure of speech, when they see writing on the wall that says, Welcome home, Eleanor. Is this one of your sick jokes, Luke? What? You really think I wrote that? You found it. You could have. I want to know right now, who wrote this? Did you write this, Theo? No, of course not. Maybe it was you. Maybe you like being the center of attention. She be the se She be the Have you seen what you're wearing, Lady Gaga? Whoever wrote this, it's cool. I didn't do it. <sighs> Have you ever noticed that Wilson's only job in this story is stating the painfully obvious? I didn't do it. These carvings are really creepy. I just think Dr. Marrow's up to something. I definitely got a soft spot for Theo. The spinach is green! I'm just throwing that out there. You know, all my life I've been waiting for an adventure. And I thought it would never happen to me. And here I am. Paintings are calling out to me. Strange noises in the night. And all it costs was five gallons of gas. Boy, she sure calmed down from that whole who the fuck painted my name on the wall thing, didn't she? In fact, that's another downgrade. In the original story, her falling in love with the house is, well, creepy, as it should be. It's just another journey into her psychotic mind, surrendering to the madness and giving into her own demented psyche. Here, it's a comforting scene. Oh, she's so happy and charmed. It's just beautiful. <laughs> Adventures are for soldiers. Or for the women the bullfighters fall in love with. I'm sure glad they took out all the scariness from that subplot. Oh, but don't worry. When the actual creepy scenes pop up, Owen Wilson will be there to let us know. Really creepy. Okay. I'm listening. So since Eleanor has decided to whimsically give in to what the house has to say, she finds that not all the ghosts are evil. Some of them are actually playful. Delightful, even. No, you will not give me Leia's buns of fun. Unless the message was, go on queer curl for the straight girl, she has no idea what the ghosts are telling her. However, she does hear some more voices leading her to under the fireplace. <laughs> oh god, they found Jeff Dunham's lost dead terrorist puppet. Silence! I kill you! That's where you are. Okay, I'll let you out. These are the scares we have to look forward to from now on, folks. CGI about as scary as the Wallmaster hands from The Legend of Zelda. Did that scare you at all? Well, get ready! There's a fuckload more of it! Really creepy. He killed them. What? The children from the mills. He wanted to fill the house with the sounds of children. He took them from his mills and he brought them here. But he wouldn't let them go. But Neeson realizes that his experiment has gone too far. He swallows his pride and confesses that the whole thing was just a hoax. Let me explain what's happening. You're participating in a study on group fear and hysteria. Well, it's over. I'm pulling the plug. Eleanor. Oh, that? None of this is real. Oh, it is real. Eleanor. Yeah. Who'd have thought that people would actually be scared in an experiment about fear taking place in a haunted house? What was he even studying? The fact that if you tell people frightening stories, they get frightened? You need an extreme setup like this to tell you that? And how the hell is he studying them? You never saw any equipment or scientific technology. And obviously he can't ask them how scared they were or else that would give everything away. This has got to be the worst friggin' scientist ever! Your theories are the worst kind of popular tripe, your methods are sloppy, and your conclusions are highly questionable. You are a poor scientist. So just as they put Eleanor to bed to try and calm her down, the flying spaghetti monster comes in to try and cause more trouble. Well, it's official. The house has turned into a cartoon. I'm gonna kill you, Eleanor! <laughs> God, it's so ah! 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 Oh, who was holding my hand? What's that? You're wondering what the hell that line has to do with anything? Oh, who was holding my hand? Well, again, let's go back to the original. You see, they built up this big, scary scene that Theo was next to Eleanor comforting her, supposedly holding her hand. 
when in reality they discover that once they turned on the light, nobody was holding her hand at all. Whose hand was I holding? Now, naturally, this scene lasted roughly four to five minutes, building up the suspense and tension. In this film, it's one friggin' lie. Oh, who was holding my hand? What do you mean, who was holding your hand? When did you ever indicate someone was holding your hand? Did someone grab it when she was shoved out of bed? Is that it? Well, that's really fucking poorly handled, you schmucks! Just because you steal a scary line from a movie doesn't make it automatically scary! It's called atmosphere! I'm giving a crap! God, I could write a book about how shitty this remake is! Actually, I did! It's called How Shitty This Remake Is! It's a pretty easy read! All it contains is the word This movie sucks! This movie sucks! This movie sucks! she tries to run through the possessed cheesecake factory, she suddenly comes across the good ghosts. And is it me, or are they just looking sillier? So she runs up a staircase where Liam Neeson tries to chase her down and talk some sense into her. Hold on. It's not gonna hold your weight there! It's breaking apart! Thank you, Captain Obvious! Again, it's like his only role! This guy would have a great job as the laughing sign for a studio audience. FYI, I missed you. Don't make a big deal out of it. Just be happy a celebrity is talking to you. <laughs> Laugh now! That was the funny part! That was the funny part! We're having a great time, a great time, I know what it is. Come on, I want you to come down with me. I'm over and step on the platform. Can you do that? I don't know which W sound face to make. Come on, come on. We have to go. I won't leave you. I won't leave you. So just as they save her and take her away, Neeson encounters his own... encounter. Jesus, I need to get them out of here. No, no you don't. You're gonna pay for Clash of the Titans. <laughs> Say you're not doing the sequel. <gasps> well, at least Eleanor is safe in her room. Just as things are getting crazier and crazier, Eleanor has a revelation that suddenly has everything make sense. You see, this is the room where Carolyn had her baby before she ran away. And the children, they wanted me to see this so I would know this was my home. Oh my god. Yes. See, Carolyn was my great-great-grandmother. What?! And the children are my family. This is where I belong. Okay, maybe I missed something, but this was made for adults, right? English-speaking adults? Now the children are dead. No, not for him. He's still hunting them. But if I'm here, he can't harm them. Why? What the fuck are you talking about? You're four foot nothing! You have the strength of a lima bean with cancer! What suddenly turned you into senior Ghostbuster? storyline, but we have yet to experience the ultimate jumping the shark moment. I don't think it's gonna happen here today. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, this could be it. The Rockest Dragon, Owen Wilson to the fireplace. He's standing there clumsily. Could this be the jumping the shark moment we've been waiting for? As you'd imagine, it only gets sillier and sillier. Don't believe me? Just watch it with this music. <laughs> <laughs> 
Wake up, Dodge Creek, and the tombstones quake. Spoofs of knockers swing and wake. Happy haunts materialize. And begin to vocalize. When green ghosts come out to socialize. So Eleanor decides it's finally time to square off against Wolverine's flatulence by giving probably one of the dumbest speeches ever uttered in any horror movie. That's meant to be taken seriously. It's about family. It's always been about family. It's about Carolyn and the children from the mill so you can hear their voices. Family. Well, I'm family, Grandpa, and I've come home. You go to hell. You know, out of morbid curiosity, let's just see how the other film is ending. Oh, wow. We're diving much more into Eleanor's psychosis. Her insecurities of belonging are finally getting the best of her, and it just may end up claiming her life. All while the darkness of both the house and her mind consume what little is left, leaving only the emptiness to live with. What moron wrote this? <laughs> oh, clearly these idiots have no idea how to write an adult scary story. <laughs> well, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna write the one for grown-ups, okay? <laughs> uh, let me see here. Um, oh, I know. How about Crane was the mastermind the whole time? And he turns into this giant evil monster. <laughs> and he makes all the scary faces. <laughs> and then all the little Casper goes are like, oh, So many complex issues here. All right, and then we're gonna see Eleanor literally, literally defeat him with the power of love. <laughs> oh, it's so inspired. It's so ingenious. Hey, I don't care if it was laughed off of the Disney afternoon. I'm the adult. I'm the adult. I write adult things. But that, that's stupid. That's stupid psychological issue. <laughs> For a second. Whew. I was literally about to go out and impale John DeBont on a tetherball pole. Alright, um, back to the movie. So the see-through wolfman is destroyed by, like I said before, the power of love, and for whatever reason, that claims Eleanor's life. We're free! Our horribly rendered souls are free! And of course, only Neeson and Jones are left to look over the horrible mess. That counts as first base. Hold on, hold on. You saved the people who are already dead, and yet you left me like a chicken with his head cut off? Oh, fuck this shit, man. I'm going to do Ben Stiller movies. They're intentionally funny. And that's the remake of The Haunting. I don't particularly care for it. It's one of the worst remakes of all time, if not the worst. I mean, when you get down to it, what's The Haunting about? It's about family. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's about being scared. And I hate to break it to you folks, but redemption isn't scary. The original is scary. There's no cartoon ghost, dumbass subplot, or Disney-style good versus evil scenarios. It's just a ghost story, and a brilliant one at that. But hell, let's remove that for a second and just look at this film on its own. It's still crap. The effects are laughable, the story is childish, and even its means of building suspense are totally backwards and nonsensical. It only gets worse every time I see it, it hurts me inside, I hope it burns in hell like that black, bloated, Beethoven bitch bucket at the end! It's about family! Oh, shut up, you idiot! 
I'm a nostalgia critic, and not even a bisexual Catherine Zeta-Jones could save this movie. Think about that. Creepy.